Hello everyone! This video is entitled Describing and Classifying Matter. In this lecture, I will discuss how matter is categorized, how it changes from one form to another, and how it can be characterized both physically and chemically. This video is a great introduction to the basic terminology in chemistry. The information presented here will prove invaluable when developing a foundational understanding of science. Okay, let's get started. So it goes without saying that you need to observe matter carefully to describe it well. The unique features or qualities of the matter you are observing are what serve to identify it for you. Characteristics that help you describe and identify matter are called properties. Properties can be physical or chemical in nature. A physical property is a property that can be observed or measured without changing the composition of matter. Examples of physical properties may be the physical state of matter, whether it be a gas, liquid, or solid, or the color of the material, or if the material has an odor. Physical properties can be subcategorized as qualitative or quantitative properties. Qualitative properties relate to the quality of a material. They're described with words and are not usually measured. So for example, is a material hard? soft, bright, or dull. Quantitative properties relate to the question of how much and can be measured and expressed numerically. So for example, is a material heavy? How heavy exactly? Is it 100 pounds, 200, or 300 pounds? What is the melting point of the material? Is it 360 degrees Celsius or 580 degrees Celsius? And so that brings us to chemical properties. A chemical property can be observed when one kind of matter is converted into a different kind of matter. And so for example, a chemical property of iron is that it reacts with oxygen to form a different kind of matter. That matter is called rust. Rust and iron have completely different physical and chemical properties. And this is because they are completely different materials. Iron is a raw element, while rust is a mixture of iron and oxygen. This table provides a quick overview of the different types of physical and chemical properties that are most oftentimes described in chemistry. Many of these may look familiar to you and many may not. As we progress through the course, we're gonna examine each one of these properties more closely in relation to certain types of matter. Matter is constantly changing and its change is due to its response to changes in energy. Energy can make matter move or change entirely. And of course, energy can be added or taken away from matter. Take a stick of dynamite, for example. You add a little bit of energy and you cause the entire stick of dynamite to explode. The material within the stick of dynamite is completely different from the material that is expelled by the stick of dynamite after the explosion. And so the addition of some energy has caused that material to change entirely. A change in state, however, alters the appearance of matter, not its composition. Take ice, for example. Ice melts into liquid water. If you continue to heat it, it evaporates into steam. But in all three of those states, solid, liquid, gas, water has remained unchanged in composition. It's still H2O. So, Physical change is a change in the state of matter and does not alter the matter's composition. A chemical change, on the other hand, is a change that alters the composition of matter. The example I used earlier is the rusting of iron. Further examples could be the decomposition of water, where water breaks down into its components, hydrogen and oxygen, the burning of wood, the baking of bread, the cooking of an egg or the lighting of a match. In all of these examples, the initial material is completely changed into a new kind of matter with the exchange of energy. And so that brings us to the classification of matter. All matter can be classified into two groups, mixtures and pure substances. A mixture is a physical combination of two or more different kinds of matter. Soil, for example, is a mixture of sand, clay, silt, 
decomposed leaves and animal remains. Now, of course, the components in a mixture can occur in different proportions. Mixtures in which the different components are clearly visible are called heterogeneous mixtures. The example I have here is a jar of M&Ms, where the variety of M&M colors can be easily seen. A more practical example would be sand mixed in with water. At the shoreline of beaches, sand is oftentimes pulled into the undertow of waves. When sand becomes mixed with the ocean, you can still see the sand suspended in the water, which means that you can see the different components of the mixture, making a sand and water mixture a heterogeneous mixture. Mixtures in which the components are blended together to appear as one substance are called homogeneous mixtures. The example I have here is Gatorade. Now Gatorade is made of a mixture of several different types of matter. But of course, we only know it as yellow or blue or red Gatorade. Other examples may be clean air or salt water or grape juice. Now, air is made up of several different types of elements, but we can't tell because it's a homogeneous mixture. Grape juice, for instance, has grape extract mixed in with water. We just know it as purple drink. A pure substance has a definite composition which stays the same in response to a change in state. Examples may be water, sodium, carbon dioxide, or gold. Every single one of these, if melted, if frozen, if liquefied, stays the exact same. Water never changes through its three states and neither does gold. Pure substances can be further classified as either elements or compounds. An element is a pure substance that cannot be separated chemically into any simpler substance. So for example, gold, copper, sodium, oxygen, every single one of these is an element on the periodic table and they're isolated from one another as pure substances. A compound is a pure substance that results when two or more elements combine chemically to form a different substance. So for example, carbon dioxide or water. Carbon dioxide by itself, isolated in a container, is a pure substance. It is a pure substance because it is a mixture of two types of elements. This flowchart provides a quick visualization of some of the concepts I discussed in this lecture. Matter can be categorized as either pure substances or mixtures. These mixtures can be subcategorized into homogeneous or heterogeneous mixtures. Mixtures can undergo physical separation to get back to the pure substances that created them. Now, pure substances can also be subcategorized into compounds and elements. These elements can undergo chemical reactions to become compounds or vice versa. This is a concept we're gonna visit in future lectures. And with this slide, I conclude this package. I hope you understood everything I discussed. Okay, all the best. <laughs> <laughs>